On Overdrive today, we bring you a compact sporty crossover from Lexus. Get you a closer look at the suave Aston Martin DB12 and drive the newly launched diesel variant of the Jeep Compass 4x2 Automatic. Hello and welcome to Overdrive. I am Soini Dad. The LBX is the most compact Lexus in the brand's portfolio at present and it is being considered for India. Now, if the brand manages to price it under 55 lakh rupees, it would make a lot of sense for its target audience. But who exactly is the target audience and also does this compact size mean a compromise in space? Let's find out. I'm at the foothills of Mount Fuji at the Fuji Speedway. Now, Lexus India has invited me here to drive a bunch of Lexus cars. So that certainly got me excited. What got me even more excited is that they told me there's one model with a three-letter word or a three-letter name to it. Now, the last time they did that, it was a supercar, the Lexus LFA. So that got me really excited. However, it turned out to be this, the LBX, a compact, sporty crossover. The LBX stands for Lexus Breakthrough Crossover and like most Lexus models, it finds its roots in a Toyota, the Yaris Cross, which in turn is a jacked up version of the Yaris hatchback. Neither of these cars are sold to us, but the LBX is being considered for India and could make sense only if they are able to undercut the BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe. Compared to the rest of the Lexus lineup though, the LBX is quite sober and has an understated look. So the LBX is the smallest crossover or the smallest vehicle from Lexus at the moment. And in terms of the design, it doesn't go as overboard or as radical as some of the bigger Lexus models that we've seen. Even the way it stands right now with these sharp lighting elements, I think it looks quite nice. And especially in the shade of red, it looks very sporty too. The low slung hood and the minimal openings at the grille help the LBX achieve excellent aerodynamic efficiency, says Lexus. It may look like a hatchback from the back, but it's still got some luxury elements like a power tailgate. I don't remember when was the last time I saw a power tailgate on a car of this size. So the boot space, the boot volume is actually quite good. The loading lip is a little high, but getting stuff in is not going to be that much of a problem because the overall height of the vehicle is not that tall. It's based on the same TNGAB platform as the Yaris Cross. And the modularity has helped the LBX gain 20 mm longer wheelbase, which frees up more space in the cabin. Given the compact dimensions of this car, the ingress and egress is actually not too bad. It's not too hatchback-like. The knee room is decent. I'll not call it very spacious. Even the headroom, not too bad. The view outside of the windows, not too bad either. However, this is a compact cabin, so four adults over long distances may become a little cumbersome, but for city commutes, this should be really good. The contouring of the seats is also quite nice, but getting three adults back in here is going to be quite a bit of squeeze. So two adults at the back is the ideal configuration. It is primarily an urban runabout then, as far as space and comfort are concerned. But while on the move, the LBX will give you a similar premium feel in its cabin elements as the rest of the Lexus cars. It has a similar steering, top quality materials, option of vegan leather in multiple colors for the upholstery, and even the push style door knobs on the inside like its bigger siblings. The sound deadening is far better than the Yaris Cross 2, we are told. As you would expect with a hybrid powertrain, the vehicle starts off in a very silent mode because it is usually starting off in a pure EV mode. Now the transition from battery to the petrol assistance obviously is not as discreet. With this smaller setup, it is pretty evident the moment those batteries are assisted by the petrol motor. It's a lot noisier than a similar powertrain that we've experienced with the Toyota Highrider, for example, which also uses a 1.5 litre petrol engine and a hybrid powertrain. But in typical Lexus elements, the road noises are curved quite well. The wind noises are curved quite well. The powertrain noises are allowed to filter in to add that little bit of excitement. And there is only so much you can do with a setup like this, which is running a puny 1.5 litre engine. This is the M15A FXE powertrain and compared to the M15D FXE which belongs to the same family and powers the Toyota Urban Cruiser Highrider, this one puts out 136 PS of power. 
but there is of course the Lexus element to it which means it has better sound deadening compared to a run of the mill Toyota it has got better handling package it's got better steering responses the steering responses are much quicker on this it feels a lot more direct it feels a lot more precise it is an EPS yes but a very nicely tuned one at that here on this tight track the car feels quite composed it feels quite nice now in terms of the powertrain nothing to write home about this is a 1.5 liter self charging hybrid system now this is a ff configuration which means front engine front wheel drive but there is an all wheel drive configuration that can also be offered with this powertrain with its hybrid and in terms of the hybrid itself lexus says that compared to their previous generations of hybrids especially these smaller hybrid powertrains the lvx is able to do a lot more speed and a lot more distance on pure ev mode as well the braking however feels quite nice despite this being a hybrid despite this having recuperation with the braking the brakes don't feel wooden they don't feel artificial the brake feel is actually quite good the hybrid system uses an ecvt gearbox and that explains the high revving nature of the powertrain and the prominent rubber band effect now this is the base spec model but the higher spec variants will also allow you to get paddle shifters behind the wheel so when you want to take manual control of the gearbox you can do that as well now think of this to be something like the Audi Q2 it is comparable to that in terms of the way it drives and in the kind of footprint that it has in the overall feel it's very comparable to the Q2 it so let's hope Lexus India is able to do a few customer clinics and understand if India is ready for the LV I think it should be a nice addition to Lexus in their sport for you. Going by its dimensions, the Lexus LVX cannot be compared to the BMW X1, but as Rohit mentioned, its driving dynamics can be compared to the Audi Q8, but it's a big task for Lexus to figure out just where they want to position the LVX. We'll take a very quick break here on the show, but coming out on the other side, we'll get you a closer look at the Aston Martin DB12. Welcome back, you're watching Overdrive. Aston Martin has started taking bookings for the recently launched DB12 in the country. Prices start at 4.59 crore rupees and early adopters will be able to get the deliveries of this Aston Martin by December. Here's Rohit with all the details. This is the new Aston Martin DB12. It's certainly dressed in a better shade of green than I am. And believe me, more than these photos, more than these videos, the car in the flesh just looks gorgeous. The imagery just doesn't do justice to it. Now, for those of you who know your cars well, this car was shown globally a little while back. And Aston Martin has already opened up its order books here in India, with prices starting at rupees 4.59 crore. That's before you start ticking stuff on the options list. Now, this is an evolution of the DB11. It rolls on the same wheelbase, also has a similar engine, but that's not where the story ends. The story is much larger than that. Let's take a closer look. Like I said, it is an evolution of the DB11. And when you look at the side profile, some of those hints are clearly visible. Like the big vent that you see extending from the wheel arch, that is again carried over from the DB11. It also bears the Aston Martin lettering on it. And when you move to the front, you start seeing the difference in the details. Like for example, the grille is now larger than the DB11. It still has those six veins, but it looks a little bit larger. The logo also looks a little bit larger. The headlight detailing is different too, but it's classic Aston Martin. The overall face is immediately noticeable as an Aston Martin. You will not mistake it for something else. In the headlights, you see these six modules which act like the DRLs and they also turn into the turn blinkers. I also like these textures that you see right here. And then when you look closely at the lens of the projector lamps, you can see the same textures reflecting in them. And there's of course the matrix LED technology as well. The detailing in the turn blinkers, the DRLs, etc. That is also something that is worth noticing. The shape, the silhouette of the car, everything is typical Aston Martin. And under that long hood is 4-litre bi-turbo V8 engine sourced from Mercedes AMG. But in the DB12, it puts out 680 PS of power and 800 Newton meters of torque. That's more power and torque than the DB11 V12 
That's also the reason why there is no V12 with the DB12. It goes from 0 to 100 in 3.6 seconds and the top speed is 325 kilometers an hour. So in all respects, it is better than the DB11 V12. Now continuing with the design at the rear, this is familiar territory too. The C-shaped taillights, the Aston Martin logo, all of that is again typical Aston Martin. At the bottom, you get these twin exhaust pipes and a very beautifully sculpted rear diffuser. There's also a retractable spoiler in the boot lid. When you move over to the side profile, again, unmistakable Aston Martin lines, beautiful coupe shape. But what you will also notice probably is a slightly larger wheel size compared to the DB11's 20 inches. You now get 21 inch standard rims on the DB12. You also get mixed tire sizes, a 275 section at the front and a 325 section at the rear. The larger wheels also get you larger brakes. 400 millimeter brakes up front with six piston calipers, 360 millimeter brakes at the rear with four piston calipers. Also take a note of the tires. These are the Michelin Pilot Sport S5 or PS5, but yeah, nothing to do with PlayStation here. These are essentially tires that are in a way bespoke for the Aston Martin as well, because this is a Grand Tour and these tires come with foam lining on the inside to reduce road noise. In terms of the grip, they should be great. We'll only find out when we drive the car. Another little change that they've made is to the width of the mirrors. You can see that it is slightly narrower now. So that not only makes it better aerodynamically, but also reduces the wind noise, says Aston Martin. So that's another little change. Now this, of course, is a Grand Tourer. Despite its 2 plus 2 coupe configuration, this is something that people will use for Grand Touring. Aston Martin says this is more of a Super Tourer. So let's check out the boot. The boot switch is on the driver's side door pad. And you have to bend a little bit to open it. And this is the kind of boot space that you get. Not the biggest of boots for a 2 plus 2 coupe, of course. But the overall size is decent for those bespoke Aston Martin bags. Talk about the interiors, this is a 2 plus 2 cabin, which means you get space for two adults in the front and well, two kids in the back. Strictly two kids, not even teenagers, but that's how 2 plus 2 coupes are. But in terms of the design of the dashboard, this is now a fresh design. You get this floating center console, looks quite good. And all the switch gear is unique. It doesn't feel like it's come from a Mercedes Benz, including the infotainment. It doesn't feel like a Mercedes Benz unit that has been reskinned. This is in fact a bespoke unit done by Aston Martin. And all the materials that you see in the car, all the switch gear, everything feels premium, expensive, shouts luxury. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the wheelbase of this car is the same as that of the DB11. So it rolls on a similar wheelbase. However, in terms of the suspension, there are certain behavioral changes that Aston Martin has engineered. Now, it's still a double wishbone suspension, adaptive dampers. You get four driving modes as well, wet for, of course, the brick weather. Then you have the Sport and Sport Plus modes and also the GT mode. So that's not only going to make changes to the powertrain, but it's also going to change the suspension behavior to an extent. But the whole idea that Aston Martin had behind the chassis or the suspension behavior uh, was to make the chassis more rigid and the suspension more pliant for different road conditions. So how that behaves on the Indian roads is something that we will find out when we uh, drive this car. But in terms of the engine, I've already told you that it is a more powerful engine now. It still is mated to the 8-speed ZF transmission, which is rear mid-mounted. It also uses a carbon fiber prop shaft. But the gearbox has different ratios now and uh, the behavior of the gearbox is also changed a little bit is what uh, Aston Martin tells us now. It will be a great drive in the DB12 to find out exactly how good this car is. Does it live up to those super tourer credentials and what gives it those credentials to begin with? So that is something that we are definitely intrigued to find out. In case you're looking for a few more options, the Aston Martin DB12 can be considered alongside the Ferrari Roma and also the McLaren GT. It's time for us to take our final break here on the show, but coming up on the other side, we'll get you acquainted with the diesel Jeep Compass and also the Jeep Meridian Overland. Stay with us, you're watching Overdrive. 
Welcome back here with us on Overdrive. Now, Jeep India has recently launched the diesel variant of the Compass 4x2 Automatic, which bridges the gap in the Compass lineup. They have also launched the luxury variant of the Jeep Meridian Overland. Let's take a look. Now, Jeep has updated the Compass for the 2024 model, and the biggest change to the lineup, or the, or the biggest addition, is of this one. You can now have a 4x2 Automatic variant. This drivetrain combination has been a stark gap in the Jeep Compass lineup so far, plugging which Jeep says has widened the Compass's footprint in its segment notably. The recipe is familiar. The 2-litre multi-jet diesel with its 170 PS and 350 Nm paired with the 9-speed torque converter automatic. Notably, this variant has been developed specifically for the Indian market. Alongside this, there have been minor changes to the suspension setup as well. But probably the most striking new addition to the Compass lineup is this one, the Compass Black Shark. It's essentially a black themed Jeep Compass and you see that immediately with this, the blacked out Jeep badging, the blacked out grille, this blacked out lower section and even the lip is blacked out. Now of course you don't just get it in red, you get it in a variety of colours and this version sits below the top Model S. But coming over here you will see what is probably the nicest touch on this car, this really cool, this really well done Black Shark badging. The Compass Black Shark gets largely the same features as the limited trim with highlights being the full LED lighting, auto headlamps and wipers, a 10.1 inch touchscreen with wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and 6 speaker audio, a power driver seat wireless charging, dual zone climate control, part digital instrumentation with a 7 inch screen and panoramic sunroof are the other highlights. Safety equipment includes 6 airbags, hill hold, TPMS and ESC. Jeep says the Compass 4x2 will do 0 to 100 kmph in 9.8 seconds and return 16.2 kmpl as per the ARAI cycle. Now the Black Shark is also available in that diesel automatic guys and there's some differences in the cabin with these variants. Mainly it's the most simpler this centre console so instead of those 4x4 buttons they are just blank now and instead of the mode selector that's not there anymore you have this parking brake over here. And of course, there's a wireless charger. And of course, the gear lever remains the same. Also newly introduced is this small luxury-focused Jeep Meridian Overland. Now, with this Overland trim, you get more chrome. As you can see, the four-slat grille is now chrome-studded. And there's a lot more chrome in the bumper too. Now, coming to the side, you also notice a new design for the alloy wheel. They're again in a shiny two-tone finish. But really, what will catch your eye the most with this car is what's on the inside. So you have this really very nicely done copper theme over here but also very nice is this suede upholstery that you see here where there's leather in the other versions here it's this very nice feeling suede and that copper theme continues on the seats you have that suede even on the seats and there's more copper here too and along the trim pieces as well now a similar treatment is at the back although it's not as flashy there's still that suede and that brown and the copper here too. Of course, apart from this, everything else remains the same in the Meridian. Prices for the Jeep Compass 4x2 Automatic start from Rs 23.99 lakh for the Longitude variant, going up to Rs 29.99 lakh for the Model S. The Black Shark is priced at Rs 28.49 lakh. On that note, it's time for us to wrap up this week's edition of Overdrive. But remember, you can stay in touch with the team through our various social media platforms. And you can write to us on YouTube as well. We'll see you next week. Until then, drive and ride safe.